So to present myself and the company, my name is Antonio Nikolic and I am BIM, currently a BIM lead in, uh, in a BIM consultancy uh, called DCT Group. Uh, we have three locations, Ireland, Argentina and Croatia. I am BIM lead in Croatia. So through, through my topic of navigating the dig digital uh, maze uh, and specifically BIM coordination regarding the MEP, uh, MEP uh, in construction phase, we have a lot of challenges, but we have also a lot of solutions to provide for our, our clients. Uh, so some, some of the agenda for my presentation will be just go through the uh, overview of current uh, MEP BIM trends, then we will go through the importance of uh, BIM uh, in uh, BIM uh, MEP services uh, for the construction phase, and then we will have a quick overview of challenges, like three main challenges. Project start from DCT point of view, and then we will have project highlights, and uh, this is the main topic actually, uh, and some future trends that you, will can, uh, that you can hear in the next, in the next block. So, for the overview of current, current uh, MEP trends, I would say continued uh, BIM adoption in Croatia and worldwide, uh, because BIM is getting more and more implemented in every country, and we can, we can see that it's already happening in Croatia and all around us. Uh, also, uh, use of, of artificial intelligence for the generic uh, generative uh, design, so we can implement that in also in MEP services. It's still in development. I, I think more or less it's used in architectural and structural parts, but we can also use it for MEP. Uh, also prefabrication, so we can we can speed up the installation process in the construction phase, and uh, renewable energy uh, going to. Uh, reduction of, of carbon footprint uh, because there are those uh, 17 sustainability goals that we want to achieve until 2030. And so what is, uh, what is the importance uh, sorry uh, what is the importance of uh, MEP uh, services in construction? Well, like you can have also as a human and a building you can have the skeleton and the meat but you also need to have brain uh, 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 stomach and all other uh, all other systems to be functional so uh, going with that we can always uh, look after the environment and try to uh, optimize our, our buildings uh, so we can achieve those goals uh, the next one uh, are the challenges in coordination. So we, we go through that, like clashes are the main point uh, from our perspective because it's always delaying the site installations. The, the other one is communication issues because there's always uh, missing information or skipped uh, information that is important for the installation part. And also the data silos to avoid uh, missing information, we need to have collaborative platforms that you can use to have all the models, drawings, and all the documentation needed at one place so everybody can have the updated information. Uh, from our point of view, so project starts in DCT, we, we also uh, have the documents like uh, a preset of questions for the construction stage, uh, which we gathered from the lessons learned from our previous projects. We also, uh, we also have like uh, the, the data centers, a lot of data center projects. So we gathered from the last five years uh, all, the, all the questions uh, for, for our project starts so we can prepare everything to update the, the models uh, and the project from uh, design to construction stage. Also, uh, when we are starting the when we are starting the project, we are doing the audit of the design model to see all the potential issues, and we can prepare to avoid them when we update to the construction stage. Also, through that, we are we can issue we are issuing the <laughs> BIM documents that are covering the processes and workloads. Also. Uh, a lot of uh, processes and workflows are implemented in our company, and I think it's important to have those just to speed up the process. And also, uh, coordination meetings are really important. Uh, 
with the design team and uh, subcontractors or general contractors to resolve all the outstanding issues. And uh, also when you have uh, uh, when you have a small meetings with uh, subcontractors, so we always try to to reduce the number of meetings and to to be more productive. And uh, and the last the model breakdown. It's important to to plan. Uh, the process of the uh, collaboration platform and all the models that will be implemented in the project. So we have the we have the perfectly uh, perfectly working model. So we can review all the subcontractor models uh, uh, and our model for the clash detection. So for the project highlights, we we took uh, three three projects. Uh, two of those are uh, data centers. Uh, the information con is confidential, so I'll just name them Project 1 and Project 2. Um, so those, two, uh, those first two are uh, really from the different perspectives. The first one is we were the BIM coordinators for the general construct uh, GC, and uh, the second one was for the subcontractor in electrical scope. And the last one, uh, we have the residential and commercial part where we also done uh, our part as BIM coordinators and information management coordinators. Uh, so to, for the first uh, project, we have a data center uh, placed in Germany. Uh, it was three years project, uh, gone through two phases, where firstly we were engaged to update the model, uh, MEP model from design to to construction stage, and in second phase, we, we took the whole MEP scope and uh, coordinated all the services inside the building. Uh, what were the challenges on this one? For for first one, uh, GC team changes. So because it's really hard uh, to have experienced people for for three years on the same uh, job site, uh, we we avoided that one with our project start documentation. So when we have new people. On the client side, we can really uh, we can really give them uh, information really quickly, and the handover is really really uh, efficient. Uh, the second one is procurement. Uh, so what happened here is that because of the war and all all things happening in the world, uh, the electrical subcontractor didn't have. We couldn't uh, order the size of the containment that was needed for the uh, for the project, so they they decided to put a bigger one, which uh, which provided more and more issues. So we avoided that one with the uh, with the scans, uh, and as we were going through the building, scanned everything, verified in the model, so we can avoid any additional issues with that one. Uh, with the design changes from investor side, uh, the the plan about that one was because we already have scanned and we have uh, automated uh, bracket uh, brackets uh, script. Uh, we avoided uh, putting more time in uh, creating the bracket tree and uh, have had more time actually to do the changes. And for the construction sequence, uh, the last one is that uh, we have all the structural walls prefabricated uh, and put on site. Here was the problem with the openings because design was not too good. So from the, our uh, previous experiences on the data centers and all, all the information that we gathered, we, we managed to, to avoid those problems. And the fun fact is only one, one op uh, was needed uh, to be cut on site uh, after our coordination, so I think that was a sex successful one. Uh, for the for the highlights, uh, I would I would say uh, we we had really really efficient coordination meetings because we save all the all the information inside our uh, uh, clash detection platform, uh, and uh, when when we uh, are doing the meetings. We are going to the straight points, like uh, dividing the issues by by priority and only tackling the major ones. Uh, then we had single so source of truth, so meaning we had col collaboration platform that was uh, really good. 
uh, we put the, all the models, all the documents, and all the drawings. So uh, we, we avoided missing uh, the information on site because usually there is, there is a lot of uh, missing information or the site team is using uh, all the revisions of the drawings. Uh, as I already said, we had the bra bracket uh, automation script, so we really uh, invested uh, less time in doing the bracket tree, for example, and more we had more time to do the, the changes. Uh, also, we we done uh, the scripting with uh, for the builder forks, not only for the structural walls, but also for the uh, all other walls inside the building, which also saved us the time. And for the asset information process, here was one problem, but uh, uh, on the on the investor size uh, side because. In those three years, they didn't really have a, a plan on how to do the asset information. So we avoided that one uh, with, the, with the spreadsheets, and we implemented the, the parameters into, into the model, and then we exported, uh, exported the, the model and the model spreadsheet and gave to all subplanners the, uh, the spreadsheet to fill in. And the uh, implementing the, the asset information inside the model was really quickly done in a few minutes, just import back to the, back to the model. Then uh, also how we, we saved time is for the installation team, we, we done uh, room by room, we, we created isometrics with all the dimensions. Dimensions were all also done automatically, so that that also save, saves that time to to focus on the major uh, bigger pro problems on the on the project. Uh, you can see here a couple of couple of examples uh, of the of the drawings, and those drawings are on A3 format, so it's really easily to carry them around on the construction site. For the second project, we we done also the data center. It's uh, lo uh, the location is Denmark. It's a big one. Uh, it has several stages. Uh, we were engaged in stage one, doing the the colo one uh, part of the building and uh, administration building with external uh, buildings such as heat recovery system uh, and sprinkling pump room and so on. So for the for that project, the challenging uh, thing was uh, the optimizing the model performance because we had uh, requirements from the investor uh, that asked for LOD 500, which is really really uh, heavy on the models, and uh, uh, for the for the families that we implemented in the model. We got them uh, straight away from the vendors. That was a request from the investor, so uh, nobody else could uh, could make those those uh, uh, families. Uh, the next one is for uh, for the poor design. So design uh, design was really really uh, poor because uh, uh, they they implemented a new system because they have like similar similar uh, buildings. Uh, all across the Europe, and then when we were doing the the project, they implemented a uh, heat recovery system, which really took uh, much space, and uh, they didn't really uh, give us more space. So the building stays the same, but they implemented really big pipes in there. So how we avoided that? We've done the the cloud cloud scanning and we, we could see the potential problems and we, we could avoid the, those, uh, those clashes with the, with the heat recovery system. Uh, also, one of the, one of the bigger uh, challenge was they, in, in the middle of the construction stage, they changed the ceiling types, so we needed to come up with a solution uh, and the solution was uh, to change all the bracketry. Uh, fortunately, we had the, the bracket uh, script, which we implemented also in this, in this project, and it was really a quick change. Uh, we created more than 1,000 view, uh, views, well, views for the drawings, 
because we needed to update all of them, and that was done quickly by script. Uh, also, overdue subplanner engagement. So uh, here we implemented the placeholder strategy, where we uh, done uh, small placeholders, including the maintenance zone and everything, uh, and the zones for the installation for the subplanner. So when they come in to the project, they already know what are the issues and how to ta tackle them. Uh, so here you can see stage four and same same room stage stage five. So as I said, poor design. So we needed to come up with a lot of solutions to resolve those. Uh, we managed with with our processes and workflows. Uh, for the highlights, as I already mentioned, the 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 bracketry uh, automation script. It's that's one uh, uh, similar to the builders frogs process. And uh, on this process, I would highlight the best thing was that the the ops needed to go through the verification from the site team, beam team, and the architectural team. So we we put all those uh, uh, all those in the model, and they needed to. Uh, to approve all the OPS before cutting it on site. Uh, with the project system prefabrication, we saved a lot of time uh, and we were ahead of schedule. So the design changes and, uh, and the, that the coordination issue with the, with the heat recovery system was avoided by that. Uh, the last highlight, I would say, is the sequence of construction that was implemented in this, in this uh, project. And that was for, uh, because uh, after the con construction, room by room, it, it was immediately scanned and verified in the model. Because usually that's always left for the last part, but then you have sub-planners left, uh, left the site, you don't have all the information. And with this process, we really avoided that. And the last one, the Kevin Street project, it's a residential and commercial uh, project, uh, which we were engaged for the coordination and I am, uh, well, information management, where we created all the, all the documentation for the project. So the challenges here were really the construction date changes and how we avoided that, we, we used that uh, uh, project start documentation that we have for every project and with that, uh, we had information for the subplanners as they came in. We could always give them the right information and they could quickly kick off the project. Also, the architectural changes in the construction stage. Uh, here we had a problem because they removed a couple of floors on the buildings and uh, we avoided that with the, with the, with the same, same documents, but uh, uh, also with the coordination meetings where we saved all the viewpoints uh, to, to have them for later on after design change uh, to use them uh, for a quicker coordination. Uh, also the same, the same one as overdue subplanner engagement and MEP changes in the construction, change, uh, construction uh, stage uh, using the documentation and the coordination meetings, we really resolved all those issues. For the highlights, uh, I would say we had for, for the simulation, uh, for the concrete pouring, which really helped for the builder's forks to be coordinated uh, really good on site. So we avoided a lot of cl clashes uh, and, uh, and the problems. Uh, as I said, complete BIM documentation we created from ER, uh, BEP, and so on. So we can ensure that all, all the participants in the, in the uh, project can deliver the beam that is requested from the client. And uh, with that, clash detection and viewpoint reports, so we, we, we use those uh, coordination meetings and the viewpoints uh, where we saved all the major problems for the subplanners that came in late, and with that, they, they, could, they could really uh, resolve uh, those problems when they started to work on the project. Uh, for the, for the last one, the future trends, just to over, overview what we'll, we will be hearing in the next block. So artificial intelligence, uh, cloud-based collaboration, and machine learning for, for construction industry. Uh, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Hope it was not too long.